بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله رب العالمين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى Lord of the worlds the one who created us, the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of our existence. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that He has bestowed upon us. وَأُصَلِّ وَأُسَلِّمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْضَلِ الْخَلْقِ أَجْمَعِينَ نَبِيَّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَالتَّابِعِينَ وَمَنْ تَبِعَهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الدِّينَ Complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah bless them all. May He bless every single one of us and our offspring, those to come up to the end of time. May Allah grant them steadfastness and bless them all. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, yesterday we spoke about transformation and we started off with the issue of changing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to continue from there. And I promised you that I would ask you a question tonight and I'm going to start with that question. So what was the question? Do you remember? Yes, get up for Fajr. So I want to know from you with a show of hands, high up in the air and be honest, how many of us got up for Salatul Fajr this morning and we read it? Put up your hand high. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, Alhamdulillah. You know, it's, it's so good and I asked this question in this specific way because I knew that those who didn't get up would actually be eclipsed by those who did so we wouldn't be able to see them. The idea was not to see those who didn't read. I could have said all those who did not get up for Fajr, put up your hand, but that's not up to me. I shouldn't be here to embarrass you. But all I'm doing is to encourage you to say those who did get up, put up your hand. And we were all in the majority. And I'm, there, there were much more hands up than yesterday when I asked you who had got up for Salatul Fajr. So inshallah, the change has begun, hasn't it? It has. How many of us are going to keep it going inshallah? By the will of Allah. We need to improve. We need to continue inshallah. Like I said, Many speakers will come to talk to you. Many reminders will come to you. But you need to ask yourself, when is it that I'm going to change? And what type of a change am I going to effect in my life? Is it something temporary? Is it something that is only going to last a few days? Or is it something permanent? Am I going to improve as the days pass? Or am I going to go, you know, dwindling on my improvements? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. My brothers and sisters, we have so many verses of inspiration in the Quran that motivate us to change. The Quran is full of inspiration, but certain verses are connected to change and what to do. We spoke about it yesterday when we said we start off by seeking Allah's forgiveness, having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, understanding that we are going to return to Allah. This evening we read Salatul Isha a few moments ago on the pitch here at this stadium. And I can say it again, Ram John Stadium, mashallah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Yesterday I asked someone, why did everyone laugh when I said the name? And they said, it's the way you said it. <laughs> Subhanallah, you know. So anyway, we read Salah on the pitch here. Did you notice something? We put our heads on the grass. Am I right? Heads on the grass. One day that grass will actually be dug up and we will be buried in the soil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. One day we are going to go back into the soil. Allah says, مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى We have created you from it, meaning from soil. And we will return you into it and we will resurrect you from it once again. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what's of importance is for us to know that we are going to go back into the earth. Today we are on it. Tomorrow we, it, we will be beneath it. So prepare for that day by transforming, by changing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by becoming closer to your maker, by understanding that nothing should come between you and seeking forgiveness. Nothing should stop you. Nothing should delay you. Nothing should make you lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is transformation. 
That is the way, inshallah, we will progress. I spoke about improving our dress code, improving our attitude, improving our behavior at home. How many of us have really taken that seriously? How many of us went home yesterday and were better people with our family members? Put up your hands. We need to see more hands, inshallah. We need to see more hands, inshallah. I know it would have made a difference because a believer is always benefited by a reminder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very clearly, وَذَكِّرْ Keep reminding. فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Because the reminding definitely benefits those who are true believers. If a reminder helps you, you're a true believer by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're a Muslim who, whom a reminder helps. That's a sign of Iman. Some people get upset when they're reminded. Are we from amongst those? You know, someone tells you, Oh, my brother, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. Stop liming and fatting on the pavements and stop doing whatever else they do in Trinidad. Subhanallah. I learned some words today, didn't I? Wow. You're just busting a lime, aren't you? Wow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, really. May Allah forgive the brother who taught me that. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> He actually asked me, would you like to bust a line, brother? And I told him, wallahi, if it's in the obedience of Allah, I wouldn't mind. If it's in the disobedience of Allah, <laughs> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect me and every one of us. I mean, but there's no point in earning the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through things that make you happy, but displease Allah. Because there are so many things that would make you happy and would make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. We need to turn to Allah. Really, we need to understand the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has a great plan. If someone tells us, stop doing this, stop drinking, stop gambling, stop going into the clubs and, and stop doing whatever else it is, you know? Do we get upset and angry? Hey, who are you? Why are you telling me this? You know, what's the point? Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, sometimes what is right glares us in the face, but we just deny it. And sometimes we're, we lose focus of what is right to the degree we become so intoxicated by the evil of the world that we don't realize that there is a maker we have to return to, yet it's glaring us in the face. Subhanallah. Our loved ones have returned to their maker. People we knew who were more powerful, more wealthy, have gone back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we still think we're not going to go. You know, it reminds me of... Uh, a joke, subhanallah, with a lesson. Something on a lighter note, where two guys watching the news, and the one guy looks at the other, and they're busy looking at the news where there is a man who's about to jump off a bridge. And that was on the news. So the one guy tells the other, meaning the first guy tells the second, I bet you this guy's gonna jump off. And the second guy says, No way, he's not gonna jump off. I bet you a hundred bucks. He's not going to jump off. Hundred dollars. He's not going to jump off. And the next thing in the news, the man jumps off. And so the second man is taking out his hundred dollars. And the first one says, look, I can't take the hundred. So the second one says, why not? He says, because I, I watched the news earlier on. I watched the news earlier on. So the second one says, so, so the first one says, I watched the news earlier on and I knew that this guy would jump. So the second one says, yeah, I watched the news earlier on as well, but I didn't think he would do it two times. <laughs> so then he says, okay, give me the hundred dollars. <laughs> you deserve, you deserve, you know, to let it let go of it. This is how sometimes the truth glares us in our faces. We know reality, but we're just denying it. Just like this guy. Today we laughed at him because for us, it's foolish to think, okay, it's the same piece of news. And because you saw it once and you think it's not going to happen again, that is the most foolish thing ever. The same thing when we watch people go in front of our eyes and we think it's not going to happen to us. How foolish is that? It's the same thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May He make us from those who realize. Let's take a look at some of the verses of Surah Luqman, where Luqman alayhi salam, in this quest of transformation of his own children and offspring, he tells his son certain things in order to transform the child, in order to remind the child. The first thing he says, Ya bunayya la tushrik billahi inna shirka la Oh my son, 
Don't associate partners with Allah for indeed that is the grave oppression. You want to transform yourself? Start off by worshipping your maker alone. Only your maker. That is Islam. People want to know what Islam is. Islam is not what barbarism is being shown on the media about a religion that has sometimes been hijacked by politicians who want to forward their political gains using the name of religion and conning myself and yourselves or trying to do that. No, Islam is purity. It is full of peace and goodness. It is full of serenity and contentment. It is full of rules and regulations that will govern the beauty of your life. They will come about with lots of peace and contentment. People say, I want to be a Muslim, but there are too many rules and regulations. And I always say, do you know the private schools have many more rules and regulations than the public schools sometimes. And this is why sometimes in some countries you achieve better results in private schools or the discipline is greater because there are a lot of rules. Do you know what? If you dress this way, you will be punished. If you do that, you will be penalized. If you look this way, you will be punished. If you walk across the field, you will be on detention. And if you uh, happen not to greet someone, you will have to run 10 times around the field and so on. That sounds hard and harsh, doesn't it? But that's discipline. The day they took away all these rules and regulations from the schools is the same day they dropped the standard of morality in the schools and discipline in the same schools. But does anyone say, I don't want to go to the school. It's got a very, very good reputation, but too many rules and regulations. I know it's right. I know it's the best, but I can't go there because too many rules and regulations. Well, if you want to be from among the best, you need to embrace these rules and regulations. The same applies with Islam. Lots of rules and regulations, but what do they do? They govern your life. They really ensure that you lead a happy life, focused, a focused life. Focus on your spouse, your children, your family members, and focus in such a way that you, you do not lose that focus so that you lose your contentment and happiness. This is the transformation that Allah is asking of you. Worship Allah alone. Don't associate partners with Allah. In Islam, we worship our maker alone. I'm not allowed to put my head on the ground for anyone but the one who made me. So I say, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. When I put my head on the ground, I'm declaring he who made me. The term Rabb means the maker, the nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer. That is all included in the term Rabbun, Rabbun, Rabb. I'm saying all praise is due to you, O oh my Rabb, O oh my maker. O oh, you who nourishes me, O oh, you who provides for me, O oh, you who is in control of every aspect of my existence, O oh, you who is going to take me away, O oh, you whom I'm going to return to, O oh, owner of forgiveness, O oh, owner of the hereafter, you are the greatest, the highest. Here I am declaring your praise when my forehead is on the ground. Wow, what an act of worship. What an act of worship. No religion has the sujood and the prostration that Islam has. No religion has the prostration that Islam has the way we have it. No. And we're supposed to go down onto the ground so many times a day through the five daily prayers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. I want to tell you the power of putting your head on the ground for Allah. Do you know the story of Musa? Moses may peace be upon him. Musa alayhi salam. And there were these magicians that had engaged in uh, their magic and they had brought along all their ropes and sticks and they tried to compete with the stick of Musa alayhi salam. And then the serpent that was the resultant uh, creature of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifest through the laying down of the stick of the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, ate up all the other sticks and ropes that all the magicians had come with. And they immediately knew that what Moses or Musa alayhi salam has brought is not magic. It is actually something from Allah. So what did they do? They fell prostrate. They put their heads on the ground for Allah. How many times? Once. How many times did they put their head on the ground? They just went down once. And guess what happened? As a result, Allah forgave them. And Allah elevated their status and they are made mention of in the Quran. And they will earn paradise by the will of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were persecuted and executed by the, by the Pharaoh, Fir'aun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises them. What did they do? They dropped prostrate. They fell prostrate for the sake of Allah just once. One prostration that was accepted by Allah resulted in their forgiveness and salvation. How many times have you prostrated in your life? My brothers and sisters, 
Haven't we lost count? If I told you how many times have you prostrated for the sake of Allah, haven't you lost count? Well, if Allah could forgive those because of one prostration that was accepted, trust me, if one of yours or mine is accepted, I have hope in Allah's mercy. And I really hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant me salvation and paradise and the same for every one of us. This is the religion of hope. Have hope. If Allah could forgive them because of one prostration, I prostrate so many times a day. May Allah accept it from me and from you as well. Ameen. Wow. Subhanallah. And this is why continue prostrating for Allah. Worship your maker alone. When you are sick there is, or ill, ask Allah to cure you. Go and seek medication from permissible means. But never ever do that which is going to displease Allah. Going to fortune tellers and witch doctors and those who promise you. And those who happen to look into uh, a few lemons that they may have cut. And a few roses that they might have set. And they might tell you, you know what? Your brother-in-law has done something on you. No, your brother-in-law is absolutely innocent. Trust me. Those whom they accuse of doing magic, black magic, and so on. Trust me. They are innocent. The ones who have made the accusation are the ones who are guilty. No matter how long their beards are. No matter how religious they may seem to be. They have uttered something that is prohibited. When someone did something to Muhammad sallallahu it required revelation in order to find out who it was. So Jibreel alayhi salam came down with a name. The angels had come down. Labid ibn al-A'sam al-Yahudi. That was the name of the man. And what happened? It was revelation that came in order to guide us all to the last two chapters of the Quran, Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. Those are the chapters of the Quran, the last two. Qul a'udhu bi Rabbil Falaq, Qul a'udhu bi Rabbil Nas. If you read them every morning and evening, thrice in the morning and evening, Allah will protect you from all forms of magic and all forms of evil and sorcery and so on. You need to read these surahs thrice every morning and evening. The problem with us, we don't even get up in the morning to read these surahs. And then we want to blame everyone to do things. So if it was revelation that came to inform the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what had happened? You tell me, who does revelation come to today? Nobody. Revelation stopped. It ceased. If you believe revelation has come to someone today, it means you have insulted the finality of the Prophet Muhammad being the last Prophet, subhanallah. The finality of prophethood being insulted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. We believe he's the last messenger. We had a sister who embraced Islam. And subhanallah, didn't we say moments ago, say that I bear witness that Muhammad peace be upon him is the final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, there it goes. So those who are sick and ill and happen to want to worship others besides Allah by believing that someone besides Allah knows the unseen uh, in a way that Allah knows it or achieves or receives revelation, they have erred. They need to transform. They need to change. They need to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rejuvenate. They need to rekindle the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will still be depressed and they will still lack and lose contentment for as long as they are distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is where we say, Luqman tells his son, Ya Bunayya la tushrik billah. Oh my beloved child, don't, don't associate partners with Allah for indeed that is a grave oppression. It is something wrong. It is a grave mistake, error. It is manifest, clearly wrong, subhanallah. And look at how he addresses his child. He says, Ya Bunay, oh my beloved son, oh my little child, oh my sweetie pie, basically. Because the term Bunay is a very sweet way of addressing your child. It's one of the sweetest ways you could actually address your own son. You know, they say, Yabni, oh my son, and Ya Bunay, oh my beloved son. You know, today we look at our sons and daughters and we are shy to call them darlings and sweetie pies. Because you're shy to call your spouse that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us sweet inshallah. I mean, may Allah make us sweet. May Allah make us sweet for the right people. Like I said yesterday, what's the point of smiling and being so sweet? And really, you know, being a charmer, mashallah. But you come home and nobody's charmed at home, mashallah. Because you're not interested. May Allah forgive us. You need to be the charmer at home. Forget about outside. At home, that's where you're supposed to be charming.
MashaAllah. The same applies to the opposite sex. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us rekindle the beautiful links that we're supposed to be having within our homes. Within our homes. If we develop our link with Allah correctly, it will soften our hearts to be the best people to our family members. Here we have the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, khayrukum khayrukum li ahli. The best from amongst you are those best to their spouses, to their wives in particular, and their family members at large. And the Prophet says, I am the best from amongst you in that regard. How many of us, our spouses and family members can say, this guy is the best. Can they? Can they? Oh, he's saying, axe them. Wow. Axe. That's typical to me. Eh? Axe them. Mashallah. We'll leave the question for next time, inshallah. You should be knowing it. You know, subhanallah. You should be knowing that, yes, I try to be the best I can. So, you know what? I'm sure they would acknowledge that, yes, you are the best. I just don't want to embarrass the brothers. Imagine if I were to ask the sisters a question, how many of you believe that your spouse is the best ever? And you find three or four hands. What would we do here? We'd have to close this meeting, subhanAllah, and go home. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So that's a question we won't ask them, my brother. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. <laughs> I just love the accent. I wish I had a Trinidadian accent. MashaAllah. It's a pity I can't, I can't put it on. I tried. So my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story of Luqman alayhi salam because there is transformation in it. There is change. The ingredients for change are there. Do you know what he says? Ya bunayya, aqimi salata wa amur bil ma'rufi wa anhanil munkar. Oh my child, fulfill and establish your prayer unto Allah. Establish your prayer unto Allah. Establish it for the sake of Allah. And enjoin good, remind people to do good in a nice and beautiful way. When you want to tell people to do good, there is a way of speaking. There is a way of telling them. You don't pretend like you're a big boss and everyone is so sinful, they're all going to hell and you're the only one going to paradise. So you actually look at yourself and say, hell, 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 paradise. <laughs> if that's the attitude you haven't achieved, you need to speak to those who are who might seem to be astray from the path because when you speak to them with goodness and kindness they will really be enlightened to see that this path of goodness has in it a lot of contentment a lot of purity a lot of goodness a lot of respect for others but the sad reality is the more we become religious sometimes the harsher and the harder we are becoming if that's the case your religiousness is not accurate it requires a lot of changing a lot of transformation you need to soften yourself those who are the most religious from amongst us are very very approachable they are very very soft in nature they really care for everyone they care for those who are drowning in the nightclubs and they pray for them at night when everyone else is asleep and they make sure that when they meet them they are so so engrossed in trying to win them over in the most beautiful way this is islam this is religiousness religiosity whatever you'd like to call it you want to be a pious person piety comes when you respect the other creatures of allah even the non-muslims the fact that you are so keen to talk to them the fact that you are so keen to show them to showcase to them the goodness of islam and the beautiful character and conduct that a muslim has been taught and you are so keen to see them see the light that is what would make you a person who has earned the pleasure of Allah, who is walking in the light that Allah has given us and has shone for us. But if you're so arrogant that you look at someone who's not on the straight path, for example, they may be, who knows, you might be on the wrong path. But say, for example, if someone's not on the straight path and you look at them as though there is no hope for them, where were you a few years back? Where were you? And who knows, where, what about your forefathers? Someone somewhere up the ladder accepted Islam. And where did they get the deen from? They got it subhanallah from someone who made an effort on them. From someone who tried. So you be a person who tries as well. And this is why establish your prayer. As Luqman alayhi salam is recorded to have said to his son. And the lesson is for us all. Enjoin that which is good. Call people towards goodness in a beautiful manner. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. Call towards the path of your Rabb with wisdom, with tact, 
Don't chase people away. Sometimes when we are regular with our prayers and we've dressed appropriately and we feel that we are decent Muslims, we chase others away because our attitude stinks. Really, we chase people away. They greet us, we don't greet back. We don't greet them sometimes because we think this man's going to Jahannam. No, he has said his shahada, who knows? The tortoise might end the race before the hare. And you know that, subhanallah. You might have a person who's racing towards paradise. And last minute, something happens and they dwindle. And you might have a person who spent 70 years walking towards hellfire. And guess what? Last minute, they happen to transform and change. Who is the winner? May Allah help us all. This is why learn to be humble. Learn to be humble, to respect all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially human beings. Learn to understand your duty towards others is to call them towards the goodness. Imagine. And this is why those who go around inflicting harm, damage, sometimes executing and killing those who are non-Muslim, they need to learn that that is the furthest from Islam. If that was the teaching of Islam, none of us would be seated here today. We would have been killed a long time ago by people who believed we didn't have the right to exist because our forefathers were non-Muslim. There we are. But rather we are supposed to be going out, sharing the goodness, let them come, let them see, let them taste, let them, let them get the sweetness of putting their head on the ground for the sake of their maker. Let them see what it is. And if you inspire them to do that by the will of Allah, you will have a full reward of absolutely every act of worship they engage in because you made the effort by the help of Allah. Allah chose you to make that effort. So make the effort inshallah and call people towards goodness. And then he says, Wanha anil munkar. Discourage people from bad, but in a beautiful way, in a nice way. When you discourage people from bad, don't make it seem like they are the only ones who need help. No, we need help too. And this is why you hear a lot of the scholars say, may Allah guide me first and then everyone else. I need this more than you do. I think I said it yesterday and even the day before. Well, the day before I remember in particular, I said, I need whatever I've said in terms of advice. I need it before you. Why do we say this? Because wallahi, we are in the same boat. We are human beings. We are. And just like you would like me to pray for you, I would like you to pray for me. We all go through our human problems and na human nature that makes us, for example, uh, not be ideal. None of us are perfect. We are not perfect. So we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need the help of Allah. So when you are correcting someone, don't make like you are correcting them from a pedestal. Don't make like you are correcting them from perfection. No, you are not perfect. You are correcting them in something that Allah has blessed you or guided you to perhaps see. And at the same time, you can tell them, my sister, you know what? I'd like to tell you something. If there is anything you see in me or my brother, anything you see in me that needs change, that needs, you know, uh, that I need help in, please tell me, please inform me. I'm about to tell you something. Don't be offended. I'm just like you because I noticed it. I'm just going to raise it with utmost respect. I'm not judging you and I'm not a person who's going to think that you're evil and bad. But I think subhanallah that perhaps you need to correct this little aspect. Maybe it will bring about a lot of goodness inshallah in your life. And inshallah you will achieve goodness in this world and the next. And I don't mean to be judgmental subhanallah. Look at how we've got to beautify this stuff. We've got to beautify the stuff subhanallah. You know when we have food. A lot of the times it's beautified. Do you know that? You have a dessert and you have little dots of chocolate on it in such a way that it draws a heart and sometimes it draws a something else and they shape it up in something and they have... Why? If it, you could have just taken the ingredients and had them as they were, put them in your mouth and enjoy the taste. But the women spend more time decorating the food than preparing it. Do you know that? Wallahi, in the kitchen. Like I always tell my family, I always say, you know what? You're spending so much time in the kitchen. Just allow me to get a cook. And they say, no, we don't want you to get a cook here. We will cook. Subhanallah. Wow. Okay. But so much time. Come on. Make something simple. We're going to eat it at the end of the day. I've chewed it in five seconds. My, the sisters take a whole day to make 20 biscuits that look like 
a motor vehicle, subhanallah. And what did you do? You came and munched them and gone. And that's it. And you didn't even say, wow, nice. You didn't. The only thing you can pick on is, I think you baked this a little bit too long. There is an aftertaste in here. And she just looks at you, yeah, like, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. You need to appreciate, don't make, and this was the point I was raising, don't make like you are the perfect one and everyone else is imperfect. You want to correct people in the proper way, make sure that you make them feel that you know what? You are one of us and I'm one of you. We're all in the same boat. We all need change. I notice something, I will raise it. You notice something, please raise it in the most respectful way. And you don't need to publicly do something to disgrace people and so on. No, it must be with respect. This is why I say when you have something to eat, they beautify it so that you feel like eating it. You know, I'm sure the worst feeling is when you enter a, like a, a coffee shop and you choose the best looking cake. And when you bite into it, it tastes like sand. How do you feel? You feel ripped off, don't you? Because you say, hey, I chose that which looks so nice. And here I bite into it and look at what it's all about. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we need to beautify our, the way we speak to others. I always say it's a, it's a product. Sell it to the people. It's a product. You know, when you have a business deal, when you're a salesman or a saleswoman and you want to sell something, you always mention the good things in such a beautiful way. And you come and, you know, sell sand to the Arabs, subhanallah. Like they say, you sell ice in winter. Have you heard that one? Because you just said, you know, this ice is so important. As cold as it is, it will make you feel warm. And so I hope you're not lying, my brother. You know, they call the ice beyond a certain temperature is called uh, hot ice. Have you come across it? They use it in these ice cream vans, I think. So my brother, you need this ice. And next thing he buys the ice in the middle of winter with a smile. Subhanallah. We're not cheating. We're not deceiving. We're actually selling a product that is the most important product on earth. And that is something that we need to market in the most appealing way. And trust me, if you're going to be hard hearted and if you're going to be harsh, they will run away. Allah tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ if you were hard-hearted and harsh, they would have dispersed from around you. But it's the blessing of Allah that bestowed upon you the best of character and conduct. So you were lenient towards them. So they came. So you spoke to them with respect. So people came to listen to what you had to say. And in order to take heed because the way you spoke was something very, very considerate of the situation that people are in. May Allah make us from amongst those who can correct one another in a beautiful way. Amen. This is transformation. This is how it will come. This is how it is. The change we need in our lives. The approach we have. The attitude we have towards others. Even those who might be sinful. Those who might, be, might not be on the straight and narrow. Subhanallah. What type of attitude do you have towards them? Change it. Change it now. Remove hatred and envy, jealousy from your heart. It's not difficult. You need to fight yourself to say, Ya Allah, I'm just one. I'm very, very mortal. I'm just a human being. I make so many mistakes. Ya Allah, you've covered me. Ya Allah, help me, guide me, and help me to guide others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Luqman alayhi salam tells his child, Wanha anil munkar, wasbir ala ma asabak. Be patient. Be patient regarding that which got to you, that which hurt you, that which, that which happened to you that was negative. Be patient. My brothers and sisters, every single one of us has to go through certain things that he or she does not want to go through sometimes. We go through turbulent times. We go through loss of life of loved ones. We go through loss in terms of uh, finance, financial loss. We go through, for example, uh, unemployment, you know, time of a time frame or a period of time where we're looking for a job and we didn't find or we go through sometimes a divorce sometimes we go through a, a, a stage where perhaps we're looking for a spouse and we haven't yet come right everyone goes through these things everyone goes through things that they don't really want to go through that shows us it's Allah in control and he tells you bear patience work towards what you'd like to achieve in the best possible way and be patient. So don't just sit back and relax and say, oh, it's, it's, it's been predestined already. So I don't know. Let me just sit back and wait. Wait for what? A job? 
It's not like the, the world knows that you're a qualified person. Go, advertise, do something, go on for a job. Apply online and everywhere else. And let people interview you, one, two, five, ten, and you might find a job by the will of Allah. But if you're going to sit back and relax, trust me, your boss is not going to drop out of the ceiling and say, hey, I need you. I need to, you know, I've got a job here and I need you. They don't know about you. The same applies to marriage. You need to make an effort. You don't just sit back and relax and say, it's not in our culture to actually look for a spouse. So we're just going to sit back and wait. Well, you're going to wait until the day you die, aren't you? Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Culture is very good on condition that it does not contradict the deen. The minute it goes against the deen, what comes first? The deen or the culture? I heard people say the deen. I hope it does. Sometimes our culture punishes us, but we cling to it knowing that we are suffering or our family members are suffering. You know what one of the cultures are? A younger girl is not allowed to marry until all those older than her is getting ma uh, get married. So we promote adultery and fornication. The reason is everything is set, but dad says, no, you've got an elder sister. Wait, wait for what? What if, what if in her uh, destiny, marriage is not written? So does that mean now I must also not be married? I must wait? No, you do not wait for anyone. If this is ready, the third daughter, the fifth one or the son, Right at the bottom, the youngest one, ready for marriage, one marriage age, everything is done. Alhamdulillah, you can skip one, two, three, four, five, get married and let everyone be happy. Are you ready to give up that dirty culture? The answer in a lot of cases is no, I'm not because I love my other children. Well, then who suffers? You are forcing the other kids or one of the kids to suffer. You're forcing them to do something that is really against Islam and against Allah's plan. Just because you want to cling to something. May Allah help us. I know I might have pressed a red button, but wallahi, it's about time someone spoke about it. Like that, there are so many matters. The issue of race. Someone wants to marry a person who belongs to a different race. <laughs> Has Islam ever given you some instruction to be a racist? If anything, it's the other way around. But would you be ready? The answer is... <laughs> I don't think so. Astaghfirullah. That's what a lot of us would say. Why not? If you're a true Muslim, that culture stinks. Trust me. Or oh, that bit of the culture smells bad. It has an odor. No way. Don't be a racist. Look at people. If someone has entered the fold of Islam, you have reverts, brothers and sisters complaining that for them to get married is so difficult because some of the folks and some of the parents and the oldies happen to look at them and say, no way, you're not marrying a revert. For all I care, they're probably purer in the eyes of Allah than those who were born Muslim because their book started later on in life and yours started a long, long time before. Subhanallah. So stop this racism. Stop it. That is the transformation we need. That is the change we need. Why is it that we are Muslims and Islam teaches us that racism is haram and prohibited, but still we happen to have from amongst us racists or within us, we happen to have little elements of racism now and again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Like I said, people might not, might not like what was said, but you don't have to like it. It just has to be the truth. That's it. Imagine a person from a totally different race coming to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage and she is keen and interested. Subhanallah. And you just being a block. No ways. I'm not interested. Who are you? How are you going to answer Allah on the day that he resurrects you from the soil and the dust? What answer are you going to give in your grave? There was nothing wrong. The man came ahead. He came forth. He was of brilliant character, proper deen. And the only reason you shook your head is because he belonged to another race. Astaghfirullah. Is that Islam? No, it isn't. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us transform. May He help us change, really. May He be with us at all times. May these things be matters that are discussed. Matters that really, these type of issues considered taboo in society, but not taboo in the eyes of Allah, they need to be crushed. They need, the barrier needs to be crossed by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, it's about time we turn to Allah. Be patient upon that which Allah has tested you with. But don't be foolish. This is why the Prophet Muhammad says, 
Work hard to achieve what you want. Seek the help of Allah. Don't be lazy. But if something happens not according to your plan, then just say that was the will of Allah and bear patience. But if you share the guilt, then you can blame yourself. Oh, I didn't. When I had the opportunity, I didn't do this and I did not do that. Subhanallah. We ask Allah's forgiveness and we turn a new leaf and we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do you know what uh, Luqman alayhi salam tells his son? And this is something we all need because it's a reminder from Allah. Ya bunayya, innaha in takumithqala habbatim min khardal fatakun fi sakhratin aw fi samawati aw fi al-ardi ya'ti biha Allah. Oh my beloved son, this is in Surah Luqman. Allah says, Oh my beloved son. Luqman alayhi salam says to his son, Remember that if it is a mustard seed's weight worth of any deed, anything, no matter where it is on earth, it can be within a rock, within a rock, or anywhere in the skies or on the earth. Allah will bring it forth, which means nothing can be hidden from Allah. No matter what you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it. No matter what it is anywhere on earth or in the heavens, Allah knows it. You cannot hide from Allah. He knows what you've done. The world might not know, but Allah knows. And this is why seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah's forgiveness. And I tell you saying istighfar, and I want to spend a minute on this. When you say astaghfirullah, oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. How powerful is that? It does not mean only, be, only if I know I've committed a sin, so I should ask Allah's forgiveness. No, even when you think you haven't done something wrong, keep on asking Allah's forgiveness because the hadith says the forgiveness is a key to the doors of all your needs. Whatever you need, you ask Allah's forgiveness. Allah will open your doors completely. This is why Muhammad sallallahu used to say, Oh Allah, forgive me more than a hundred times a day, scattered throughout the day. I call on you, all of you and myself, throughout the day, in, in a language you understand, or in the Arabic language if you know it, or if you know the words, say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. Keep repeating that. Such that every day you say it more than a hundred times. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. Say it within yourselves now. Oh Allah, forgive me. And think of some of the bad things you've done. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. Repeat it now as you are sitting here within yourselves. Oh Allah, forgive me. And keep on saying it. Oh Allah, forgive me. And every little while, oh Allah, forgive me. You're driving to work. Oh Allah, forgive me. And why do I say, say it in a language you understand? Because a lot of the times we say, Astaghfirullah, but we don't know what we're saying. We don't think about it. And we just pay lip service to it. You know, when you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, in salah, you're supposed to immediately say, Astaghfirullah, thrice. You know what a lot of us do? We say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Have you heard that? Stock flaw, stock flaw, stock flaw. Astaghfirullah. What's that? You're paying, it's an insult, lip service. You haven't even asked Allah's forgiveness. You just repeated words because to get it over and done with. Come on. You're saying, Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Look at how powerful the statement is. Subhanallah. And you pray five times a day. And after every unit, every set of prayer, you would say that thrice. You definitely clock much more than a hundred if you made this a habit. Subhanallah. So you ask Allah's forgiveness. And this is how you change because when you are serious about asking Allah's forgiveness, you become a better person. You know, if I tell you, look, I'm very sorry. What I did to you was very bad. Will I do it again? Say, for example, I... Uh, Astaghfirullah, may Allah forgive us all. Say, I abused someone uh, with my tongue. I said words that were unacceptable. And then I went to them and I said, you know, my brother... I'm so sorry, I said something bad about you, please forgive me. I really feel so bad and I feel so crap, you know. I, I, I don't feel good at all. Forgive me, please. And he says, ah, oh, it's okay, don't worry, you know, it's fine. It's forgiven and it's okay, it's okay. 
and you go back and immediately, what happens? If you were genuine, you won't say bad words again. But if you were a fake, you're going to go back and say, guys, he's forgiven me, but you know what? He is like this and like that, and you start off all again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. Let us never be fake when it comes to asking Allah's forgiveness and keep on asking Allah's forgiveness. If your human nature makes you err again, if it makes you commit sin once again, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy encompasses the sin again and again. But don't plan to sin when you are asking for that forgiveness. Subhanallah. Allah's watching. Allah knows. Allah records how many times you have asked him for forgiveness. It's there in your book. And this is why the hadith says, Tuba liman wujida fi sahifatihi istighfaran kathira. Give good news to he or she on whose sheets a lot of forgiveness will be found on the day of judgment. So you know your, your, your pages will be laid bare on the day of judgment. And on your page, every little while, there's a record A, forgiveness. Seeking forgiveness, seeking forgiveness. Every line you sought forgiveness, Allah says, oh, good news to that person. Every line. You know, every moment, my deeds are being written. Every day, there's a page, right? Well, I'm just calling it a page. But every day, say, for example, there's a page. Imagine on that page, more than a hundred times, every single page, I've said, oh Allah, forgive me. Do you really think he's going to burn you in hellfire? No, he won't. His mercy is greater and grander than anything you can think of. Imagine once the Prophet, peace be upon him, was passing by uh, a woman who was breastfeeding a little child, infant. And he asked his companions, he says, do you think that this woman would throw this child into the fire? They said, no ways, that's impossible. A woman breastfeeding a baby. You know how much connection there is, how much love there is, how much affection there is. It's impossible to think that this woman will get up and throw the baby into the fire. It can't happen. So the Prophet ﷺ says, well, I want you to know that Allah has much more mercy upon every one of you than this woman can ever have on this baby of hers. Subhanallah, what mercy, what mercy, what a smile it brings on our faces, mashallah. But we need really, we need to give the excuse. We need to give us the smallest reason for us to achieve the mercy of Allah. If we are working towards the anger of Allah, change so that Allah's mercy will descend upon you. Imagine, nothing is hidden from Allah. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May He guide us. May He open our doors. And the piece of advice that Luqman alayhi salam gives his son towards the end of these verses, he says, O oh my son, be humble. Do not turn your cheek up against the people. Do you know what that means? Don't turn your cheek. Don't give your cheek to the people. It means literally, don't be arrogant. Talk to people with humbleness. Be calm. Develop your character, your conduct, your speech, the way you interact with people. Develop it. Make sure that is your key to Jannah. It's your key to paradise. When the Prophet was asked about the deeds that would result in people earning Jannah and paradise, he said the consciousness of Allah and good character. So be a beautiful person. Be humble. Really, no matter what you have, you can be a very powerful person, a very wealthy person, a very popular person, a very good looking person. You can be whatever. But you need to be humble. People will love you when you're down to earth, when you are a normal human being like everyone else. When you understand that you're just a number like the rest. So develop your character. Don't give your, don't turn your cheek. Don't become arrogant, you know. Who, oh, you don't know who I am. I'm who I am. You know, one day there was a lady in the airport and there was a guy who missed his flight because he was late. So the woman who was checking in, the passengers, happens to tell him that, you know what, uh, you've missed your flight, sir, and I'm sorry, it's just closed. He says, no, you have to open it and you have to make sure that I get on the flight. She says, I'm sorry, I can't do that. It's closed. The flight is closed. You are late. Obviously, his fault. And you know, the arrogance steps in. Some people who, who are powerful get so tempted to flex their muscle at that stage. Don't. 
don't. So she, he says to her, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? She says, hold on, hold on. So she goes on to the PA system and says, ladies and gentlemen, there is a man here who doesn't know who he is. So, <laughs> you're asking me, to, you know who you are. So there is a man here who doesn't know who he is. And ooh, you should see the guy's face. I wonder what it looked like. Subhanallah. So don't ever tell someone, you know who I am. Who are you? You're just a human being like me. And like everyone else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Wala tu sa'ir khaddaka lin nas. Powerful advice for change, transformation. Don't be arrogant. Don't turn your cheek. Don't give your cheek to the people. And don't walk in a haughty fashion on earth with haughtiness. You know, you walk as though you're the person, you're the one. Subhanallah. You're the only one. That's it. You walk like you own the world. Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us. You know, the stage is a little bit too short, small. Otherwise, I'd have shown you what I mean. <laughs> you want me to go down and show you? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. I'm sure you got the gist of it, right? You don't need to walk in a way that, oh, you know, I'm the guy, I'm the dude, that's it. Oh, it's me. I'm the prettiest girl here. Don't worry, a day will come when the wrinkles develop on you as well. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Those wrinkles are beautiful. Do you know why? The wrinkles of the face take the wrinkles of the heart away. Did you know that? When you start developing wrinkles on your face, your heart becomes cleaner, better. Because you now realize, you know what? I'm aging. I'm getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes no wrinkles on the face. And you know what? Your heart, woo, don't want to see it. Because the attitude, this is why we say when you walk, be careful, be humble, relax. Everyone is there, you know. There was a lady, one, you know, popular person on the globe. And she was walking with these high heels. You know, when I say high heels, I mean like, you know, when you tiptoe, you know, you get high heels like a few inches, I don't know. But this was like so Mount Everest, you know, you can have an avalanche at any time, subhanallah. And she's busy walking and, you know, looking this way and that way and whatever. And the next thing she dropped flat on her face. It's on YouTube, subhanallah. She flat, she fell flat on her face. And guess what? Everyone started laughing. Astaghfirullah. Imagine. Now, if you were humble and you fell on your face, I don't think people would laugh at you. They'd rush to your help. And I'm not saying people, those who laughed were right. They were wrong. You shouldn't be. Excuse them. That's their weakness. You rush to them and make them realize, hey, you're just a human. Don't worry, you made a mistake. We all make mistakes. But the point being raised is sometimes Allah tests you. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes something happen to you for you to realize you're just a normal, ordinary human being. You thought you were such a big deal. You look down upon others. And here you are needing the help of the same people you look down upon. Be careful. Be careful. This happens. So, la tamshi fil ardi maraha. Allah does not like those who are arrogant, haughty, proud, too much pride. May Allah forgive us. Don't be one of those. That's the only time you'll be able to change yourself. And the last piece of advice that we will speak about tonight. The way you talk. Waqasid fi mashika waqdud min sawtik. The advice of Luqman. He says, you know what? Walk with humbleness, humility. We've spoken about that a little bit. And he says, lower your voice. Speak with respect to people. Lowering your voice means your tone, the way you speak to people. Let it be calm. Let it be good. You know, when we're at home, I once lived in a certain country. And my neighbors were such that they would greet each other screaming and yelling. So the first time when I shifted, I really thought they were fighting. So I went to knock on the door to try and sort the matter out. And I said, sorry, brother, you know, I, I, I hope everything's okay in your home. He said, what do you mean? I said, no, I, I hope it's all okay, you know. But what are you talking about? He said, are you, weren't you guys just fighting? No, no, we're just greeting, we're just talking. We're just having fun. How are you? Is that how you talk? Relax. You want to ask me how are you? Stop screaming. You frightened the whole lot of us, man. Didn't you guys get a shock? 
Well, I was only saying, how are you? Come on, guys. None of you said, I'm fine. Did you notice that? Why? Because that's not a way of speaking. Allahu Akbar. Calm down, relax. I think I woke you guys up, right? We can go on for another hour, inshallah. <laughs> relax, take it easy. Calm down, lower your tone, man. You want to talk? Don't scream, don't yell. Allahu Akbar. It reminds me of the old people. Well, some time back, you know, when we used to phone overseas. The phone is just here, right? Hello! They say, hey guy, relax. They can hear you. No, they're from England, UK. <laughs> Are you UK? Can you hear me? Okay, relax. Hey, hey, they, they're in the UK, you know. And then you get the other wise crack at the top of the building looking with binoculars saying, Hi there, can you hear me? Hello, are you fine? Because he thinks they're so near. Subhanallah. So you have all these wise cracks. All you need to do is just relax. Take it easy. Speak in a tone that is required. When the Prophet ﷺ spoke, never did anyone tell him speak louder. No one told him you're speaking too loud. He had the perfect tone. For one person, it was worth that person. Two people for two. 20, 30, he raised his voice accordingly. Let's learn. It's a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Raise your voice according to the number of people you're speaking to. You're talking to one person. It doesn't mean the whole hall needs to know your discussion. Subhanallah. And when you're speaking to many people, did you notice what I did at the beginning of the session? I took my time to ensure that these microphones were, in, were positioned correctly. The fan was in the right place. I took my time. It might have taken a minute or two. But for me, it's far better to spend a few moments at the beginning than every little while fixing this, telling you, hey, this fan is wrong. That is wrong. This is happening. That's No, do it proper. Take your time. And then inshallah, go for it. And I don't regret. Wallahi, I really don't regret. Subhanallah. Because there were no disturbances, were they? MashaAllah, the fan's blowing. And alhamdulillah, the sound seems okay. Everything is fine. Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity to meet. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. I've said a lot. And I want to end off by saying, my brothers and sisters, when change comes, it should come from within. It should really be a feeling that we have. And it should grow as time passes. We need to be the best of people. We need to really improve ourselves every one of us myself included we can improve the way we speak the way we dress the way we uh, worship Allah the way we interact with others the way we come across to people the way we walk everything needs improvement and inshallah I hope these few days that I've spent with you have been days of motivation whereby we've all promised that we will change inshallah and the next time I come I will ask you a question how many of you how many of you have not missed Salah for the last year? Since the last time we met. That's going to be a question we're going to ask inshallah uh, next time. But I hope and pray that inshallah we see so many hands. May Allah make me from amongst those who never misses a Salah. And may Allah make you all from amongst those who never miss a Salah. And over and above that, may He make us from those whom our Salah is fulfilled in such a beautiful way that it is accepted by Him. For indeed, if our prostration is accepted by Him, we will achieve salvation. May Allah forgive us on the day He resurrects us. May He bless you all and bless us all. We spend a moment also to ask Allah to grant those who, are, who have suffered across the globe and who are suffering across the globe, may He grant them all ease in whatever suffering they are going through. May He open their doors of goodness and ours, all of ours. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahu bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.